Well, I've said it once and I'll say it again. Nicole is amazing. Today is my birthday and she's got up early and made me some French toast. So we're going to be eating in style today. She makes a good French toast and uh, we've been going the last few days without proper breakfast. We've just been eating sort of rusks and maybe some yogurt while we're driving, stuff like that. But today's a special occasion, so we're going to make it count. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Well, you get gravel road and then you get gravel road. Uh, the, the, the main road kind of through here is a well-graded gravel road. Uh, yesterday, we were, on the way in, we were driving in fifth gear, um, 100 kilometers per hour, flat out, um, kind of just gliding over any corrugations or bumps. But this road going up to the, the campsite, I mean, we're in low second and we can't really go faster than 10 kilometers per hour. Otherwise, it just gets too, um, too intense, just rocks and dongas and pretty bad so just goes to show when you when you look at gravel roads on on maps be very careful because when you're planning your time some gravel roads may take 10 times longer um, per kilometer than others um, and that's a really big factor so even in choosing our route back now I think we're gonna choose very carefully which roads we take because even though some roads may look similar distance or shorter on a map they may take five times longer this morning, we are being treated with many Gemsbach sightings. This is a species that we don't really get in the part of the country that I'm from. They really sort of thrive in very dry areas and can survive with very little vegetation or water. As with most national parks in South Africa, this was once private land that was bought back by the government years ago and it always interests me to see the old remains of stone farmhouses and to imagine what life must have been like here all those years ago. I can just picture waking up to the sight of the sun, hitting these mountains, gulping down a primitive breakfast and then heading out into the scorching heat to tend to a flock of sheep. It must have been quite a life, but then again, there are so many people in South Africa who still live like this. We eventually make it out of the park as we arrive at a fork in the road and turn left. Our route today is going to take us south along a very long and remote gravel road, a brief ride on the N1 highway, and then down towards the Swartberg Mountains once again, where we'll take the famous Sieverwerkspoort crossing into the Klein Karoo, and onwards to our camping spot for tonight, Gamkeberg. A wind farm on a hilltop gives us our first indication that we are nearing some form of civilization once again as we near the small town of Langsburg and see the Swartberg mountains ahead of us now covered in a thick blanket of clouds. You may remember our awesome adventures in these mountains in episodes 1 and 2. It's really a special place with plenty to do but we're not quite done with this range yet as we edge closer and closer once again. The road to Sieverwerkspoort takes us parallel with the mountains for almost an hour, giving us a fantastic view of the northern slopes, and we eventually reach the entrance to the port. The Sieverwerksport road zigzags through the Swartberg mountains like a jigsaw with the highest mountain in the Western Cape, Sieverwerksport Peak, towering almost 2 kilometers above the road. Translated to English, Sieverwerksport means 7 weeks port, although no one really knows how it got its name.
This, I think, is a view best appreciated from outside the vehicle. So, time for a lunch break. Well, I never get tired of driving through Sievervik's port. Um, I did make a video once before um, showing a trip from Cape Town to Port Elizabeth and kind of dividing it between the sort of first half, which I, I went inland through the Karoo, and then the second half, which is more along the coast. So I'll see if I can link that down below. But yeah, this place never gets old. Massive mountains behind us. That mountain up there, you can't really see the peak of it because it's over the hill. But that's Sievervikspoort Peak, which is the actually the highest mountain in the Western Cape. It's like, I think, 2,300 meters or something like that. Um, and in the winter, if you drive past here, you, and most of the time, you'll just see snow on top of the mountain. It's pretty high. It's amazing that this, this road coming through here has almost no elevation change. It's so flat all the way through, and yet you're passing through this massive mountain range. So it's quite, it's quite amazing that such a natural flat spot exists, and it's like such a perfect way to get through the mountains. So beautiful to see, but we're just stopping for lunch. Uh, we're going to do some toasted sandwiches today. So once again, gas stove comes out and Chef Nicole will be preparing the meal today. Well, we've just arrived at uh, Khamkabar and we've just uh, checked in and, and found our campsite and everything. We're not going to set up the campsite yet because there's a 4x4 trail that goes up the mountain that we'd really like to do. So, yeah, um, let's see. Uh, trails this way. Going to take a left here and let's get up the mountain and see what that has to offer. We didn't want to spend the night at Khamkabar without at least experiencing the reserve a little bit and we noticed that there were quite a few 4x4 roads marked out on Gai GPS leading up into the mountain. The road into the mountain starts off with Lawson's Pass, a pretty intense road that was much steeper than I expected with some really tight switchbacks. There was a viewpoint marked on the map towards the top of the pass so we hop out for a look down over Tierkloof and the Swartberg Mountains to the north. Wow, this is awesome. A lot more scenic than I thought. And this little 4x4 route that we did up here is probably the most intense or hairy um, road that we've done on this entire trip, which is pretty cool. Just down below us here, we've got the Tierkloof, and you can do a hiking trail all the way down the bottom. It looks really nice, nice and green down there with a bit of a river flowing. Um, so that's definitely something to, to do next time we come here. And then on that side, we've got the whole Swartberg mountain range with the Khamka River Valley down below. Now, what's cool about this is we were actually there um, just a few days ago, coming in on the Otswin side um, to the mountains, um, which is on the eastern side, and then doing the whole road to the hill, Khamka's Kloof, which is literally all the way across here. We can actually see the south facing um, mountains of, of that pass so it's just weird to think that just over these mountains here is the the road that we that we drove not too long ago but uh, yeah beautiful scenes and really really glad we came here
Normally, trig beacons mark the highest point on a mountain, but I was a little bit disappointed to find out that the true peak actually lay just behind this one. What? Leave it at the top. Let's keep driving. <laughs> When we do get to the top, we get a great view of the Otonikwa Mountains looking south. Kamkaberg is sort of sandwiched between the Swartberg Mountains to the north and the Otonikwa Mountains to the south. And the next morning, we would be crossing the Otonikwa Mountains on our way back home. So it was nice to get a great panoramic view of them before heading down towards camp. So this was my birthday present yesterday. Um, it's a pour over made by Stanley who make the, the flasks. Very high quality, didn't cost much. Now the fact that we have three different ways of making coffee. We've got the pour over and we've got uh, the Aeropress and we've got the Bialetti. Which shows that we're perhaps a little bit obsessed. More me than Nicole, but very nice piece of equipment and coffee tastes good. Home stretch today, but no shortage of sights to see by any means as we begin by crossing the Robinson Pass over the Otaniqua Mountains and then proceed east along the beautiful garden route with all its rainforests, rivers, mountains and beaches. The northern side of the Robinson Pass is the drier side with most of the rain off the ocean being dropped on the southern slopes but the moment we pop over the apex of the pass, we start to see water for pretty much the first time on this entire trip.
the Otanuka Mountains um, are relatively close to the coast and they catch a lot of rain so the south side of the mountains are always very green um, a lot of ferns on the south side um, a lot of sort of um, like indigenous forests on the foothills of the mountains stuff like that whereas the north side is very dry uh, and in typical Otanuka Mountains fashion we come over the peak of the mountains and the south side is just foggy and misty it's like a totally different world um, but yeah that contrast is is one of the things that makes it fun to drive over here it's a pity we can't see much with all the fog but at least we are getting to experience uh, some beauty we got to see some awesome views on the north side but down we go it looks like we are just coming out of the fog now and we should see some more greenery on the side At the town of Marshall Bay, we hop onto the N2 highway heading east and enter what has to be one of my favorite parts of the country and one of the most spectacular roads in South Africa, the Garden Route. I've actually done a whole video about the Garden Route which I'll link below, but I'll leave you with some of the views that we saw on our drive home. The most notable has to be the road between George and Wilderness which takes you down along the Caymans River before giving you beautiful views of the Wilderness Coast. And then of course the Lake District around the town of Sedgefield and all the breathtaking views along the coast around the forests of Nasna, the rugged coastline around Plettenberg Bay and all the different rivers and inlets around the Tsitsikama, Harkerville and Formosa wilderness areas. With these views, we're going to bring another series to an end. As always, I hope you've enjoyed coming along with us on this adventure and if you did, please consider subscribing. We'll see you in the next series where we'll be heading to a very different part of the country, the Drakensberg Mountains, to tackle some serious high elevation mountain passes close to 3000 meters above sea level. Thanks for watching.